Hello, welcome to the Thursday, February 10th, 2022 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. Looking for some new PCAPs for family pack at night? Well, a brat got something interesting for you, and that's an Emotet infection that leads then to an install of Cobalt Strike. Brad attributes this infection to the Epoch 5 botnet. What's, what's kind of interesting is that after the initial infection, it took about five hours uh, before Cobalt Strike traffic started uh, to show up. So initially, you just have the standard spam bot traffic as typical for Emotet and such. It uses a number of different email ports like 587 and 465 in order to spread the malware. And then later, there is some Emotet command control traffic on port 8080 as well as HTTPS, so 443, before the actual Cobalt strike traffic starts, which in this case uses the domain foxofelly.com. All the PCAPs can be downloaded from Brad's site and uh, more indicators of compromise you can find in Brad's diary. And of course, Patch Tuesday wasn't just about Microsoft, but we had a couple other companies release updates. For example, as usual, Adobe. Adobe released updates for Premiere Rush, Illustrator, Photoshop, After Effects, and Creative Cloud Desktop. Illustrator has the most vulnerabilities being addressed here with 13, some of them having a CVSS score of 7.8, allowing for arbitrary code execution. Photoshop After Effects and Creative Cloud Desktop only have one vulnerability each, but it is also a arbitrary code execution vulnerability where Photoshop and After Effects, they assign it a CVSS score of 7.8, while the Creative Cloud Desktop vulnerability only gets a CVSS score of 7. Nothing of here is super critical in my opinion, but as you get around to it, you probably want to make sure that the creative departments in your organization have up-to-date tools. And we did get updates from Intel. Now, Intel published a total of 24 different bulletins addressing 76 vulnerabilities. A little bit hard to summarize them all, but uh, plenty of bias vulnerabilities here, some with CVSS scores up to 8.2. The main risk here usually is that an attacker who has some control over the system may be able uh, to compromise the firmware for persistent access. Patches are available from Intel, but that may not do you that much good uh, because typically you have to update the BIOS with a new version provided by your motherboard manufacturer or the OEM where you purchased your system. It may take a while for them to come out. What I recommend is um, maybe sort of have your internal monthly bias review date or something along these lines uh, where you double check uh, whether or not uh, your biases on your common systems uh, are up to date. It tends to be quite difficult to really sort of get all the update notifications and such from the various manufacturers. And Magento is back in the news. Magento, the e-commerce platform, and in particular Magento 1, which I forgot how many years this is now no longer supported. So something that you definitely should no longer be running, but apparently lots of people still do run. Sansec is describing this attack as a mage card attack and certainly fits that profile. The end effect is that the attacker injects JavaScript into the site that will then inf exfiltrate a credit card data as the user enters it. Couple interesting uh, tidbits here. First of all, the payment skimmer is loaded from a website called naturalfreshmall.com. So this is a domain name that would not necessarily uh, create any suspicion if you see that in an e-commerce uh, website. Also, they're abusing here a SQL injection flaw. In the past, this particular SQL injection flaw, which is in the QuickView plugin for Magento, uh, 
has been abused to add admin users, uh, but well, with SQL injection, there's usually a lot of different things you can do. You can, in this case, essentially alter the database. So uh, they're actually injecting a PHP code into the database that will then be executed as that code is pulled from the database, which essentially leads to operate code execution. Sansex block lists additional indicators of compromise. So take a look, but I think that domain name and that was again, a natural fresh mall.com uh, should be a real good and easy way to uh, figure out if your site has this malicious code included. Well, that's it for today. So thanks again for listening. And uh, yet again, if you like this podcast, I would appreciate if you Take a couple seconds uh, to give it a good vote or maybe even write a quick review on whatever podcast platform you're using to download it. We should be available on iTunes. We are on YouTube. We are on Amazon. If you have an Amazon Alexa, you can add it to your flash news in the morning and wake up uh, to the podcast. So thanks and talk to you again tomorrow. Bye.